Hi, this is Glenda. In today's video, it's about making a soap using the Dutch pour technique, or also known as the wind blow technique. This was a part of the monthly challenge from the Soap Making Forum website. This is a technique from the painting world, and here we have one of the sample videos that we were given. It is by artist Olga Sobi, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It pretty much consists of um, having a canvas and then she put white paint over the canvas and then poured other colors on it. Then use a blow dryer to create a pattern with the colors and reveal the colors that she had poured on top. Now, in our case, because we're making soap, we will be using a slab mold so pretty much a slab of soap as our canvas. This other example was from Grace Holloway and in it she used an actual blower, a small blower uh, machine to create her impressionist fish. We were told we could use a blower or a hair dryer or simply uh, a straw and you know just blow with our mouths and we were advised to be very careful with this because if at any point we get soap butter close to our mouths, we're going to get burned really bad. So if you are going to attempt this or any other technique making soap, make sure you wear the appropriate protection equipment. In my case, I'm wearing gloves, I'm wearing a um, facial shield. And when I was making the technique, I had straws. And I made sure not to put my lips anywhere close where there may be traces of lye solution or soap batter. I am fast forwarding through this part because this is just making the initial soap, the what will be the canvas. And I'm just adding some of my end pieces of soap and it will be like a surprise of colored as the bar gets used. Uh, you should be able to see them. A couple days later, I made the soap for the Dutch pour technique. And right now, I'm measuring out the light water solution that I need from my master batch. The oils were at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 Celsius. And the light water solution was at room temperature, which today in my house, it was 24 Celsius or 75 Fahrenheit. I'm going to add the light water solution to the oils and then just stir them with a spatula. There is a steep water discount in my lye solution and I need the soap batter to have a thin consistency similar to that of paint. So I need to be very careful on not stick blending this too much. So I only did five short bursts with a stick blender in the space of 45 seconds and in between I just stir the mix with a spatula and then I came to this moment where I wanted to see if it looked like it had reached emulsion and it looks like it had which meant it was time to stop using the stick blender and start dividing the soap butter into different containers to color it which brings me to the inspiration for this soap the Grand Prismatic. The Grand Prismatic Spring in the Midway Geyser Basin is the largest hot spring in the U.S. and arguably the most awesome. The colorful rings surrounding this massive spring are caused by bacteria that thrive on the rich minerals in the pool. The center is too hot to support life, but the edges are cooler and downright intense. Look at that, dude. You've got red, yellow, orange, green, and blue. That is unbelievable. It's a pretty looking bacteria, I gotta say. So if you notice, he mentioned a lot of colors forming part of it, and I'm going to try to make each one of them. Even the steam, so I'm using white for that, and it, I hope it just gives it the effect of the steam or the vapor that comes up. It really does work better when you disperse your micas in oils prior uh, because I didn't, I couldn't just stir the micas in so I used a small mixer. Since this is only two ounces of soap, it sort of worked. If I was using any more soap butter, I don't think the mixer would have done a good job. 
So here's the soap. It is firm, so I'm going to get it out of the mold. This is a 6 by 6 inch silicone mold. I'm going to put a link to this and to all the other supplies also in the blog post in case you're curious. And I put it inside an 11 pound silicone liner so that it will capture the extra soap that is going to fall on the sides. The following morning, it looks like it has sort of ash. So I think I'm going to plane it to get rid of it, but I, I need to be careful not to plane it too much because it is a very thin layer. So here's the final picture of how they look. I did have a lot of soap batter left over from this and I used it to make a soap that I hope to share with you next week. So I'll see you then. Bye!